Hello Watch Enthusiasts, and welcome to Watch Chronicler. In this video I'd like to address a very significant market for the watch industry, pilot's watches. These watches have been enjoyed by users and collectors for years, and on the wrist of Albert Santos Dumont, became some of the first mainstream watches. The design offers the wearer more functionality than a field watch, but without the bulk of a dive watch. So today I'd like to discuss some of the best options at each respective price range, thus offering value and quality for any budget. I'd also like to point out that this video takes account of serviceability, as especially in the case of a tool watch, a reliable and affordably maintained movement allows years of enjoyment. First though, I'd like to announce that WatchChronicler.com, the new source for sharp, in-depth articles and videos on watches and the design technology and people behind them, is now live. Take a look at WatchChronicler.com for the extended article version of this video and for all the latest news from the watch world, ranging from a gorgeous new Longine to the history of ceramic watches. Also, remember to like, share and subscribe and hit the bell icon to always be notified when new content is available. And do also follow Watch Chronicler on Instagram to see everything from macro photography to watch news and also to be the first person to hear about new articles and videos. The first watch in this video is the Smith's PRS29A, which is produced by Eddie Platt's Time Factors Company, which is very well known for producing very high quality watches at very reasonable prices. The inspiration behind this watch is the Smith's military watch issued to the British Army and Royal Air Force between 1967 and 1970, which, by modern standards, appears rather small at 35mm in diameter. However, for this remake of the original watch, the diameter of the rugged, brushed stainless steel case has been increased to 36mm, but has remained slender at a hair over 11mm thick. This allows the watch to be appealing to both vintage lovers and those who want a no-nonsense military watch. And by the way, this watch has been issued a NATO stock number, thus adding to the package of a true military timepiece. From the sapphire anti-reflective box crystal to the 100 meter water resistance, this watch has been comprehensively upgraded for modern use. An aspect which will appeal to many, it must be said, is the presence of drilled lugs to make strap changing very easy. And perhaps most remarkable is that this rather small and seemingly delicate watch is given a significant 250 gauss anti-magnetic rating through the use of a soft iron core, as is the case on a watch like the Rolex Milgauss. Aesthetically, the watch comes in two variants. The first is the cream dial, which features a more decorative logo and delicate simplicity. It also offers thermally blued hands, which are very rare at this price, and give an unmatched colour. The other dial is more technical and practical, and is a matte black dial with military markings and superluminova C3. The hands used here are high contrast and are also luminescent, but what's most impressive is the sheer quality of the dial, which really does speak for itself. Mechanically, the watch is fitted with the manual version of the well-known ETA 2824, the 2801. It offers very similar specifications, such as the 4Hz beat rate and 40 plus hour power reserve, however it also allows the watch to be slimmer and removes the one problem prone part of the ETA 2824, the automatic winding assembly. And so as a package, it's difficult to imagine better value with a price of £405. For a pilot watch around £1,000 with a rotating bezel and luminous dial, it would be very easy to simply recommend a SIN 104. However, there are potentially more interesting options if one looks to Hanhart, a fascinating brand which originated in the Black Forest. The origins of their watches come from the 1930s pilot's chronographs, but influenced many others during the 20th century. A simpler watch to their chronographs, I'd like to present the Pioneer One, a three-hand model with a 42mm by 12mm case. This case is treated with real care to replicate the sharp lugs of its forebears, whilst giving modern finishing. Protruding from the side of the case is a very large but delightfully shaped crown, and whilst not screwed down, it does give 100m water resistance, and is signed. The rather unusual bezel is taken from the 30s, and features a fluted surface instead of more conventional markings. A single red marker can be used for timing periods with an understated appearance, really befitting the original aesthetic. The dial, presented under an internally anti-reflective coated sapphire crystal, is available in black and white in addition to anthracite or dark blue. To offset these colours, Hanhart had added more red elements to the anthracite and white dials and increased contrast with black hands. A standout feature is the hand design, which allows the pencil hands to reach each marker perfectly for its specific function. The dial itself is also stepped to lower the hour ring between the centre and edges of the dial, so as to gently separate each function. The result is extremely legible and very handsome. Internally, the watch uses the well-known Solita SW200 with a 38-hour power reserve, 26 joules and automatic winding. As a mildly redesigned ETA 2824, it will provide a reliable and affordably serviced companion for years to come. And therefore, this watch offers a very balanced appeal. 
On the one hand, it appeals to those who want something understated and of the utmost quality. On the other, it presents a reliable and potentially extremely practical tool, rather a lot for a price of £890. I've known Formex for a couple of years, and I never cease to be impressed by the standards to which they work, but also their pursuit of innovation. This approach can be seen very clearly in the company's pilot's watch. Formex produce both three-hand and chronograph variants of the Pilot, but today I intend to focus on the automatic chronograph form. When handling this watch, the first noticeable attribute is the very curious stainless steel and grade 2 titanium case. Measuring 46.5mm in diameter by 15.5mm in thickness, one might imagine that it would be uncomfortable, but not so. With a unique construction, the inner case is able to float within the outer case on four springs. The benefit is that it conforms to the wrist, and cushions the shocks and vibrations to which an aviator's watch might be subjected. Despite this, the case is finished with very tight tolerances and brushed and polished finishes. These can also be enhanced with black PVD treatments for some or all of the watch's surfaces. The dials of these watches are available with sunburst or matte effects in black, blue or silver, or indeed in carbon fibre. If you choose the latter, a double-tipped second hand also allows secondary timings to be taken whilst the chronograph is already running with a second colour to the other end of the hand, which I imagine also helps to balance the weight of the hand out if the watch is subjected to g-force whilst the chronograph is running. Aside from a chronograph, these watches also feature the day and the date to add to the comprehensive functionality of this glowing display, thus echoing cockpit instruments. Where the movement is concerned, we're provided with the Velger 7750, a movement long used by the likes of IWC and Omega, which was one of the earliest movements to be designed with a computer. The result is a 4Hz automatic chronograph with a 42-hour power reserve which can be viewed through the sapphire case pack, a feature which doesn't impede the 100 meter water resistance. This is clearly not a watch for everyone, but for those who do enjoy something different and impeccably engineered, it may be a very interesting choice for a starting price of £1,200. The following Oris contains complications housed within it and a care of design which exceeds many watches with far greater prices. If the aforementioned Formex was made for a fighter pilot, the Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot World Timer is built for the international traveller. Physically the Pro Pilot is not small with a 44.7mm diameter and a 13.1mm thickness. However, thanks to curved lugs, it remains comfortable and defends its size with a well-proportioned display, and this is indeed the priority for any good pilot's watch. The case is brushed stainless steel with aeronautical forms echoed in the turbine bezel, also offered as a 100 meter water resistance courtesy of a screw down crown. Before discussing the dial, I feel that the modified ETA2836-2 inside this watch should be addressed. As it shares much of its architecture with the movement in the Hanhart, I shan't dwell on the specifications. However, it now has 30 joules as a consequence of using a module to offer a second time zone with a day-night indicator on the dial. This also offers small seconds and an independent hour hand. The latter is most interesting as by turning the bezel, one's able to jump the hour hand back and forth according to travel through different time zones and different areas on the planet. This offers an intuitive alternative to other complex systems on more expensive watches and also means that the movement will remain affordable to service despite this additional complication. The Pro Pilot is available with two different dial options. The more professional of the two is matte black with yellow accents, whilst the more delicate presents a sunburst grey base. Whilst the former is more legible, I feel the spirit of the watch is in line with the more playful variant because it gives just a slightly more aesthetically pleasing look, although the choice of each will really depend on the individual and whether you want something more professional, perhaps even military, or something more relaxed. In either case, this is a watch which is still produced by an independent Swiss brand and which offers an understatedly modern charm with serious functionality for a starting price of £2,650. From their long tenure as the supplier of Mark 11 watches to the Royal Air Force, to their creation of the first ceramic pilot's watch in 1994, IWC has shaped the pilot's watch world. However, recently prices and lacklustre movements have reduced their appeal, but this year they've offered a brand new collection which promises really rather great things. The pilot's watch automatic top gun in this video moves into the realms of luxury with a £5,250 price tag, but justifies it admirably. True to IWC's history, it's offered in a 41mm wide ceramic case, which gives a matte black appearance, which will not fade or scratch over time, a real advantage of this material. This makes the watch ideal for a cockpit environment in which scratches would be a real risk. The screw-down crown of the watch is not ceramic, but titanium, due to the risk of fracturing such a small part, and also to match the titanium case back. Where the case links to IWC's innovation in the 90s, the dial is there for pure legibility. The large hands are matte black above the similarly finished dial, 
Creating brilliant contrast, the Arabic numerals are a rich, uncluttered white to match the superluminova present on the dial and the hands. The only touch of colour is seen in the red Top Gun logo at 6. Even the date is black, and its window is step for visual effect. What stands out throughout the dial details is the sheer care taken to make every part look perfect, exactly what justifies the price. Technically, this watch uses an in-house calibre 32110, a very distant relative of an ETA2892. But don't let this put you off, as in this exceptionally well-decorated form, it's virtually entirely new. It's adjusted to five positions for accuracy, and gives a full 72-hour power reserve. To add to this, it's protected from magnetism by a soft iron shield and also silicon parts. A domed anti-reflective sapphire crystal tops off the package, which is also resistant to low pressure, so for example if someone were to eject from the cockpit of an aircraft, it wouldn't be blown out. As a complete package, this is a surprisingly simple watch. However, this shouldn't distract one from the superlative quality of what's offered here. What IWC have created, in my opinion, is very close to all the watch you would ever need. I will, however, conclude the video there, but please do tell me what you thought of the video in the comments down below, and also head over to watchchronicler.com for more. Please do consider liking, sharing, and subscribing too, and so thank you very much for watching. This is Armand the Watch Guy from watchchronicler.com. Out.